Hello traders, Gary Wagner here just after 11 o'clock in Honolulu, 5 o'clock in New York on Friday. Happy Aloha Friday as we say on the islands. It is June the 13th, 2014 and this is uh, the daily report for gold and silver. We have precious metals markets mixed today. Again, we have gold and silver higher, platinum and palladium lower in terms of gold and silver. Moderate price change, but a price change to the upside nonetheless. Currently trading 1277.40. That's just off of a high of 1279, the low 1270 and 10 cents. And as I said, current print roughly 1277 and change. Silver. Also trending higher today, actually in terms of percentage gain, it is the leader on the precious metals board, up about three quarters of a percent or 14 cents higher. 1966 current print, that's off of a low of 1941 and a high of 1983. More on silver towards the end of the show. With the current scenario unfolding in Iraq and this week's tepid economic news along with a weaker U.S. dollar has really culminated in terms of events to create a kind of a perfect storm for starting to see this market rise higher. Market today up a couple of dollars. The key as we've been have as we have been looking at it was first the fact that we kind of put a line in the sand. The line in the sand was this 76% retracement level. It was a 76% retracement level of the rally, which began, of course, last year, culminating at 1391. As this market began to trade higher, we executed a trade. We got into our gold position roughly at 1253. That was right after this dramatic rise here. And then we had the market kind of trade sideways for a couple of days. This is Friday of last week. And this next small doji right here is Monday of this week. If you recall from earlier broadcasts, I talked about the fact that I really didn't see any problems or issues of this market breaking through the 61% retracement level. That is roughly at the 1261, 1262 level. I also said that once it broke through that level, what we'd probably see is a pretty dramatic, some sort of a spike as it broke up and broke above that, what we labeled as minor resistance. We certainly got that, and that was our, our $12 plus move yesterday. Today, we have the market a couple of dollars higher. It has made a higher high, a higher low. But once again, the market has really moved back into a period of consolidation. We talked about the fact not only over the last couple of days, I used that as our topic for chart this, sent you a link, of course, that was earlier this morning, that the overall characteristics of this market, realize that can change at any moment. And it, we can also witness a hybrid where we get a combination of these different types of ways the market moves up. But what we have been seeing and what we have been noting is that first of all, when we look at the bottom of this market and it's very, very clear on a weekly chart, even on a two day chart, we'll try to pull both of those up time permitting, but we had this three river morning star form. Three river morning star is simply a candlestick pattern in which you have a red candle, a star, and then a green candle. It's a, a classic V pivot point. And when you think about these key reversals or pivot points, they really have to culminate in an, they can culminate, excuse me, in a number of different ways, but they always have the same factors involved. In other words, you'll get some final sort of sell in the market, and that's always going to be a red candle. In other words, you're going and you're making a lower low if on a daily chart as it relates to the previous day. True candlesticks here with opens and closes. The next candle that comes in, in other words, as the market comes down, and let's say that this is our, our red candle here, and that of course would be following the market moving down in some way, you can get a couple of different ways that this pivot point can occur. The classic way this three river morning is basically where you have some sort of a star gap in the middle. In other words, a period of consolidation. Body color really isn't all that important, and that's followed, of course, by some sort of a green candle, and that's your classic three river morning star. However, you can also get patterns such as an engulfing bullish where the next day you would simply remove, so to speak, this middle candle right here, just kind of cross it out, and what you'll get is an engulfing bullish, 
And then you can also get a piercing line. And in a piercing line, what you're getting is this green candle moves to or above the midpoint of the red candle, but doesn't close above it, which of course makes it in engulfing. And those are the different types of key reversals that we'll see. A fairly common occurrence, though, is the Three River Morning. And the reason it's a fairly common occurrence is as a market moves down, it tends to run out of steam. In other words, the bears don't simply hand over the torch. They do during an engulfing bullish, but they kind of pass it slowly. You get a settling of the market. You get a consolidation in the market and then you move to higher prices such as here. How does that relate to our current scenario? Well, one thing that has been really predicating this last move are these periods of consolidation. So you get a consolidation, you get the market spiking, you get that price surge, another consolidation, a spike, consolidation, a spike, and then today's really was consolidation. We did get higher pricing and this is why I believe that there's so much validity within this type of a move up. Simply put, you're not getting any type of corrective action. As I've said, I believe that we could run into some sort of resistance roughly at 1288 and we'll have to see because if it barrels straight through there, that's telling us that we've got some new price points that we want to look at above that point. And in yesterday's daily report, I suggested different strategies of exiting the market, one by trailing a stop up, two by putting a price order in anywhere between say 83 and 85. In terms of what I believe is your best possibility is I always like to trail the stops up because we never know when we're going to get a dynamic run in the market and really all we can do is position ourselves so that we are well set and prepared for that move by being long right before the big wave comes and moves prices higher. So while we still have this chart up, I would like to convert it into our Japanese average so we can get an indication of what we are looking at because you get a quite different feel and a look from these two charts. And even though we had a moderate day today, up only a couple of dollars, you've gotten a long body candle. Now, why is that? Because rather than comparing it to from the open to the close of today's session, which is how we got that smaller body candle, this is the midpoint of the prior day, and that's what it compares it to. Simply put, on a Japanese average chart, a green candle is one that closes above the midpoint of the prior day. A red candle is one that closes below. How far above or how far below signifies the strength of the candle. And what we're seeing here is an extension because it's moved further and further away from that midpoint of yesterday's candle. What we're really seeing now is we've got the absence of wicks. That's what we're looking at. And body size is enlarging. That tells us that the trend that we're witnessing, this upside trend that we're witnessing, is still absolutely intact and is picking up steam. We are looking at a weekly chart. I am having an issue today with our cash market charts not updating. This, of course, is the continuous contract off the COMEX, COMEX Gold. And we do have that variation on this chart. Realize in a COMEX chart, the biggest difference is there are actually opens and closes to the market session. So you do not get that continuous feed where if it closes here, your next open is going to be right at that same tick. But even with that in mind, if we take a look at this particular pattern, again, a weekly chart, we have the long red candle down, we have a star gapped in the center. It should be below that. A star should be in the morning position, but it's just above that. The other interpretation, although it would be very loose, would be a pattern called a bearish harami, which is simply an inside trading day. But on a bearish harami, you typically get your inside trading day, meaning the trading range of that day would be more in the center of the candle, not as far down. This can easily be interpreted as a star, small body doji. This, of course, is last week. And then this week with our dramatic price rise off of what? 12.50 up to 12.76. We've got the market moving what? About $25 this week. And it has formed this particular candlestick pattern. So traders, what are we looking for next week? What is our strategy? We still have open positions in both gold and silver. We have suggested two different techniques of exiting that. As I said at the beginning of the show, I am more inclined to trail stops. Yes, we'll miss a 
larger move if the move is confined to a given range but when you get a true breakout in the market you're able to capture that and on the research that I've done when we look back at yearly performance and we've got 50 trades in there 60 percent 65 percent are winning trades 70 percent are winning 30 percent are drawdowns what makes it a profitable year is one good risk reward exceptional stop loss control so that when we're incorrect we take a minimal drawdown but more importantly than that, it's those couple of 100, 120, 130 dollar plus trades that we get during the year because we catch a 200 dollar rally and pick up 120 dollars of it. That's what really makes the year. So for that reason, I am more inclined to recommend trailing your stop. But as I said, the choice is up to you. It depends on what your aversion for risk is. What are we looking at in terms of current support and resistance level? The way that I see it right now is that we have 1262 and this should easily at this point become some sort of support in the market. Current resistance, I'm still pegging between call it 1285, 1288. That is a 50% retracement. And what's so important about that is when we look at these real bodies, the standard candlesticks, true opens and closes, we have none of these either opens, and that's the green candles, or closes on the red candles that have opened or closed below this price point right in here. And this, of course, was our compression triangle in which the net outcome was a pretty horrendous break to the downside. So my sense is this is where we're going to find some resistance. If the market is able to actually move into this area, unlike the spike that we saw as the market went over the 61% retracement point, my sense is because we have so much price activity, we could see it muddle or meander in this price area. And the next target, should the market break above 1285, has got to be $1,311. 1300 of course, a big psychological number, but our real resistance level has got to come in from this 38% retracement at 1311. Silver, you know traders, for those of you who have been with me for a while, we really went absence, void, cold in terms of recommending anything to do with silver. In fact, our last couple of trades did not contain uh, any kind of recommendation of silver except to stay on the sidelines. I'm absolutely glad we changed that outlook on this particular signal. We did go long. We went long roughly at $19, $19.03 right in that area. And that right now, if you look, is the 14-day moving average. That's $19.03, and we're well above that, as I said, trading roughly at $19.66. Where do we see resistance in silver? It's pretty easy to see. We can carry these tops across right in here just above 20 and then we've got really this band of resistance right in here which comes in at around 1980 roughly in that area so for that reason as this market moves up it will move up in unison with gold if we see the equities markets as it did today having a little bit of strength and activity we could see a little push from that but this is where I'm looking for some initial resistance to come in. We'll have to see how it pans out. But what I like about silver right now is if by some chance it can barrel through this pretty substantial level of resistance on a technical basis, we really don't have any real resistance in the market until we start to hit these tops and these tops are at around $22 per ounce. Now, I'm not saying that silver is going to go to $22. What I am saying is on a technical basis, if we're able to breach the 2020 area, we're really in no man's land until we start to get to about the mid 21s up to 22. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. Have a great weekend. Fathers have a great Father's Day. We'll talk to you on Monday for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.